What's happening, my friends? Welcome back to the channel. Let's get into Glover Teixeira versus Jiri Prohaska. This is not going to be like a super detailed official breakdown. Maybe I'll do a separate video for that later on. I just want to kind of rant on the fight. Uh, talk about who I think is going to win without getting too crazy into detail again. So let's get into this matchup. I think this one is going down UFC 275 right around the corner. All right, so Glover Teixeira, a.k.a. the Brazilian Rocky. Glover Teixeira is an inspiration. I think he's like 42 years old. He might be 43 years old. And um, to become UFC light heavyweight champion, like so late in his career, is uh, super inspiring. Like think of Glover's losses. He's had some, some pretty bad ones. Um, there was a point in his career where pretty much you counted him out because you thought he was chinny. Um, I know a lot of fans thought this, maybe not every fan, but it was going through a lot of fans, like their minds that Glover can't take a big shot anymore. So, you know, going from that to uh, being a title contender again is really remarkable, let alone winning the title. Truth be told, Total transparency, I know that I've counted Glover Teixeira out several times and he has surprised me pleasantly because I'm a big fan of Glover Teixeira. I think um, he's a nice guy. I mean, I never met him before, but by all accounts and everything I've seen, he seems like just a great dude. So winning the belt couldn't have happened to a nicer guy or more deserving guy. He's been grinding for years, like I said. He's had some setbacks, some tough losses, never gave up, kept pushing, kept believing in himself, and became the champ. That is extremely commendable. Like I said, big fan. Glover's skill set, I would say standing, he's primarily boxing base. Um, great boxing for mixed martial arts. Sticks to the fundamentals, the basics, there's nothing flashy with Glover. Very sound offense, uh, very sound defensive boxing. He just basically walks you down and grinds you out. You know, same thing goes for his uh, grappling game. Glover, his grappling game might actually be more competent and more effective and deadlier than his stand-up. If Glover gets top position on you, you're in trouble. He's very top-heavy. He has super solid Brazilian jiu-jitsu, very technical, by the book. Does everything correctly, not to mention he's super strong. Like I said, Glover gets on top of you, you're in deep trouble. He's shown that time and time again. Uh, he's rallied back in fights where he's been rocked, um, hangs in there, recovers, which he has great recovery. And one of his go-to things is um, Glover, he heard you against the cage. And when he sees that your back is anywhere near that cage, he'll shoot in on you. It's like once he gets a gripper on you and he starts working that takedown when your back is against the cage, most likely he's going to take you down. He's very, very good at that. Glover comes in super conditioned. I don't think I've ever seen Glover gas out or look like he's running out of steam. That's like another weapon of his, his cardio and conditioning, which is also amazing considering his older age for mixed martial arts. That just goes to show you how hard this man works. I really don't know how you can hate on Glover Teixeira, honestly. Moving on now to Jiri Prohaska. Jiri Prohaska, scary individual. This guy is Muay Thai and his stand-up is deadly. He's very creative on the feet. He's also technical when he chooses to be, but for the most part, he's kind of like free-flowing. But he can do that when you're very proficient and an expert in a certain area. You can do that. You can play around. You can be creative, similar to Israel Adesanya. A lot of striking coaches, people proficient in striking, will would point out a lot of things that Izzy does that is not by the book or textbook that might get you in trouble. But when you have speed, reflexes, athleticism, and you're very technically proficient and an expert, like I said, you could play around a bit. And that's kind of like what Jerry Prohaska does. He's so like wild and unpredictable. Uh, he creates like odd angles. He attacks you from weird angles. He's hard to hit. He has great footwork. 
I wouldn't necessarily say that his defense is amazing, but um, I think his offense is so quirky and weird and, and unorthodox and effective that that is his defense. The weakness in his game is probably his ground game. Maybe I'm not familiar with Jerry Prohaska's fights, all of his fights. I can't say that I've seen him gas out, but that's definitely an avenue that uh, Glover Teixeira could possibly exploit. You know, pushing the pace, uh, making Jerry work. He has to crowd him. But but back to Jerry's skill set. I'm going to uh, get into the fight itself. Yeah, Jerry Prohaska, very mobile, um, agile, quick, explosive, unorthodox. Very hard to get a read on him. Knockout power, obviously. Look at his KO resume. He's young. He's younger than Glover. That's definitely a plus and an advantage. I feel like standing Jerry has... Um, he has way more in his arsenal than Glover, for sure, for sure. And he's going to be faster and more explosive. Which brings me into the fight. Who do I think is going to win this matchup? It's tough to say. It's tough to say. Now, <laughs> in the beginning of the video, I did say that I've doubted Glover many times. Um, It's tough with this fight because, honestly, I think I might be leaning towards Jiri. But I definitely think Glover could win this fight. I'm not counting him out by any means. I don't think it's going to be a squash match necessarily. Glover is super tough. And I can tell you how he could win. If Glover drags this fight out and he makes it out of the first round and it's going into the second, midway into the second, because this will be a five round fight, his odds of winning greatly increase. Because it's almost like Glover gets stronger as the fight goes along and his and his opponents get weaker and i think that'll be the case against jerry but like he has to survive the onslaught he has to survive the onslaught he has to figure out how to slow jerry down he has to figure out how to stop his movement because those are the things working against him um jerry's speed his explosiveness and his movement these are things that glover's not going to be able to obtain at this stage in his career. He can't really improve on these things. As a matter of fact, he's probably slowing down quite a bit. But like the age-old story, the race between the tortoise and the hare, it's not about speed all the time. Sometimes if you're clever, if you have a game plan, if you're steady and diligent, it goes a long way. So Glover has to stick to a game plan. He has to be ready to survive an onslaught early on. He has to be ready to go through hell. He has to crowd Jiri. Because if you crowd a dynamic striker, you basically muffle or stuff his kicking game. You stuff his striking game. Guys that need distance to explode. That need you know distance to uh, measure you, to pick their shots. Again, at their own pace, that's Jiri. Not to say that Jiri's pace is slow, it's not. It's fast and chaotic. But that's what I'm saying, you have to slow him down. So Glover's defense is gonna have to be on point. He's gonna have to have um, a high guard, you know, protect his head. There's gonna be shots coming in, fists and kicks. It's gonna be interesting with Glover's, you know, boxing base style, how he deals with the low kicks, but I've seen Glover deal with low kicks fairly well. And if Jiri throws low kicks, He's susceptible to getting a leg caught and being taken down. And I feel like if Glover takes him down and gets top position, it's going to be bad for Jiri. So, yeah, Glover, he's got to slow him down. He's got to crowd him. He has to uh, somehow get Jiri's back against that cage. Go for his typical MO, you know, shoot him for a takedown. Once Jiri's pretty much cornered, has nowhere to go, he can't really sprawl. But the thing is, getting Jiri in that position, um, he circles well, he's very light on his feet, he's quick. It's not going to be easy, especially when you have strikes coming at you. I feel like at some point, Jiri is going to catch Glover early. You know, on the opposite side of the spectrum, Jiri Prohaska has to be light on his feet. He's got to stay mobile. He has to watch it with uh, his kicks. Front push kicks work well. But he has to watch it with the body kicks and the low kicks because, uh, like I said, Glover could catch a kick and he's going to be in trouble. So circle, work the outside game. Jerry has a more diverse striking game than Glover. Use that. He's also a lot faster and more explosive. Use that. 
it's a tough one to call. It really is. Because like I said, Glover has a way of like pulling it off. He just does. I think I read something that Glover wants to win this fight and possibly retire UFC light heavyweight champion. That would be a storybook ending to a freaking awesome career. I would say my heart is with Glover and head is with Jerry. And if I had to put a ratio on it, I got Jerry Prohaska 60-40. And that's actually a compliment to Glover Teixeira. But like I said, if it passes the second round, uh, Glover's in that fight. He's in that fight. I feel like if Jerry stops him, it's going to be in the first or second round. The same way, you know, Jerry has the advantage striking or he should. Uh, if the fight hits the mat, Glover infinitely has the advantage. As a matter of fact, I think Glover has more ways to win. Glover could win by knockout. He certainly can. The dude is a bull. He's super strong. He hits like a truck. And he could also win by submission or ground and pound. Glover is definitely the more well-rounded fighter. But the things working against him, speed, athleticism, youth. And also, he doesn't have as much of um, a diverse striking game as Jerry. So like all of that combined, I think I'm leaning towards Jerry Prohaska against 60-40. But guys, uh, that's going to wrap up this segment. Hope you enjoyed this. I don't, know if, I don't even know if it's a short breakdown. I don't think it was. Maybe I won't have to do a separate breakdown. Whatever. Um, hope you enjoyed the segment. If you did, first time at the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. Truly appreciate it. Like and share as it helps the channel grow. Gets the channel on the algorithm. And uh, that's it, guys. I will catch you all on the next segment. When this one takes place, we'll come back and talk about it as usual. Until then, everybody take care. Stay safe. Later.